Welcome back to another drum video. Today we're going to be talking about something that I've done recently and that is getting back into playing the drums after having a long break. So yeah, I've had three years off not playing drums at all, you know, thought about it a lot but didn't actually play. I've sold my, sold my big acoustic kit, that's gone, and I just had other priorities to get on with. And you know, this is something that a lot of people go through. They'll play drums like from a young age up to their mid-20s, then they'll kind of step away just because life gets in the way, whatever reason it might be, and they then decide, you know, I want to pick things up again. And that is exactly what I went through. Today, we're going to talk about how I got back into it and how I think you can too. There are just a few things that I would consider before you get started, and these are things that I definitely thought about a lot. So number one is, can I actually dedicate the time to playing the drums? The last thing you want to do is start trying to play, but then not have the time, being all frustrated that you're making no progress, and just giving up before you've even started. For me, I thought about how much time I could commit to it, I thought I had the time, so I decided to go ahead and start learning. Thought number two that you also need to consider is, Am I in this for the long term or just the short term? Is it just a phase? If you've got the time, start playing and then see are you in it for the long term. Point number three, this isn't applicable to everyone, but I sold my big drum kit, my big tamer kit that I love ever so much. I sold it. Just because I, I don't have the space, I can't afford to be going out to rehearsal rooms all the time, I'd be spending, well, I'd be spending all my time setting the kit up and down rather than just playing and practicing. And that is no fun at all. I just know that would put me off straight away. And at home, I don't have the room for an acoustic kit. So I sold it at the time. And the last thing I wanted to do was invest in, you know, a nice new electric drum kit without knowing if I was gonna be playing for a long time or not, you know? That won't affect everyone. Some people have their stuff in storage. That's fine. Once you've confirmed, yes, I have the time. Yes, I'm gonna be doing it for a while. It's time to get cracking. Number one. You need to start small. For me, this phase lasted about three to four months. I basically got an old practice pad that I still had, a pair of sticks, and I still, and I kept my bass pedal. I didn't get rid of my axis pedals, I kept those. So I just had a single pad set up, bass pedals, and my sticks. I just started just playing basic rudiments and just playing basic beats on a pad. It was nothing fancy, <laughs> I promise you. And yeah, that's what I did for the first three to four months. Because there, there are a lot of things that you're going to lose depending on the amount of time that you took away from the kit. So for me, I noticed that sticks just didn't feel natural in my hands. And that is something that you obviously want as a drummer. So I had to spend a lot of time just getting used to how sticks feel, how they rebounce, and just spend a long time working on that. Step two, which was probably the most frustrating, is that my timing kind of went to pot. <laughs> which is obviously, that's devastating as being a drummer. Your main job is to keep time. So I did a lot of metronome work, just a lot of sitting there, just starting at a slow BPM, working up slowly, just doing those basic kind of exercises. This stage is hard, considering this is what you're doing at the beginning, it's going to test you, because if you can make it through this, you're probably going to be in it for the long haul. This is where all the frustration is. You know that you're better than this, but you just got to get through it. It's pfft, not easy. It's ever so rewarding when you do get through it. Uh, I'm not going to go in depth about what I did. Here's just an example of some of the exercises I was doing on my practice pad. So, here you go. So as you can see, just really basic, just taking my time, enjoying the process, trying not to get frustrated. That stage one, that lasted around three to four months. For me, I knew I was done with that phase when I had my time in, kind of mostly back at a pad, and the sticks, they just kind of felt right in my hands. I could sit down behind the pad, pick up the sticks, feel pretty comfortable straight away. That's when I kind of knew. I think this is more of an internal thing and you'll know the feeling when it's right to move on. Stick with it and just play until it feels natural. Oh yeah, and a final tip for this stage, I found I wasn't doing long sessions. I was just doing shorter sessions more often. I didn't want to burn myself out at the very start in the most frustrating period. Short and often. 
Phase two is where it kind of started getting more exciting for me. And for this, I call this stage moving on to the kit. You've got the basics right on the pad, but the best thing about being a drummer is taking those patterns, those rudiments, and applying those onto the kit in a musical way. So for me, this is at the stage where you know, I knew I was going to be in this for the long term. I bought my new kit, the Roland TD-17. I got it all set up. And yeah, I sat behind the kit and realized that there was a long way to go. <laughs> uh, this stage, it lasted about two to three months. It's not easy. So you really, so when you've been on a pad, you feel pretty comfortable, you're in the zone, it's all good. But then you move to the kit and you realize that, you know, keeping your time in whilst moving around many different surfaces isn't as easy as it sounds. So there are a few things I had to overcome. Um, so the first one, is kit mobility and accuracy. So things as doing rudiments on a pad become quite complicated when you're moving around multiple toms and a snare. Yeah, there was two stages to that. One was the actual getting around, you know, kind of efficiently. And then number two was the accuracy, getting used to hitting all the pads in the center again and kind of committing where everything was to muscle memory. It's, it's not so easy after you've had a bit of a break. So that was the first challenge I had to overcome when getting behind the kit. The second thing, which is kind of a nuance that drummers work on for their whole careers is, is the dynamics, getting used to playing different dynamics on different surfaces while you're playing different rhythms. It's, it's challenging and that's probably the most frustrating thing. Once I was able to get around the kit, kind of more efficiently, how I'd used to play, um, it was then making it sound musical, making it sound correct. So I had to spend a lot of time on dynamics and that's something I'm still definitely working on because it's just a never ending beast. But that's just one of the things you have to be more conscious of. Dynamics are tricky, it takes time and you just have to be patient with yourself. I'm not gonna go into the exercises I've been using for kit mobility really. I'll just show you kind of one example of what I was doing. For this stage, uh, I did play with a metronome a lot and I did more advanced metronome exercises. Um, which if anyone's interested in, I'll make another video on. But in this example, I'm just gonna show you some of the beats I was playing and some of the very basic exercises I was doing. If you want to know more on that, hit me up in the comments. So this stage for me lasted about two to three months. I consider the end of this stage is when you're pretty much at the level you were before you stopped playing for, for the period. And that's kind of where I got to. So for me at this stage, there, there is one thing that you definitely need to do, and that is set a long-term goal. So that could be many different things. It could be joining a band and playing live. It could just be making drumming videos for YouTube, making covers. It could just be just becoming an even better drummer. Learning those time signatures you never learn, working on those rudiments you never learn, just getting better and having fun in that process. And so this is where I'm at now, and this is kind of a never ending phase. You always wanna have something to be aiming for. So for me, I've got back into making videos, and step number two is I wanna become a better drummer. So at the moment I'm working on applying rudiments to the kit, trying to go a bit more advanced, so mixing up rudiments, creating interesting patterns and trying to make it feel natural. So that's where I'm at the moment. And those are my goals. Personally at the moment, I'm not sure if I want to be in a band or not. I don't know if I have the time, but I, I love playing the drums still and I want to get better. So that's what I'm focusing on. Those are my long-term goals. I highly recommend that you have a think about what you want to do and set something. Just write it down on a piece of paper and work towards it. If you don't have a goal, you'll soon fade away you probably won't enjoy as much and then you might just end up giving up again like you did in the first place making this whole cycle pointless and then if you want to give it a try again in another few years you'll be back to square one
So that's where I'm at now and how I think you can get started after having such a long break. Make sure you enjoy the process, stick with it, have fun, don't take it too seriously and most importantly move at your own pace and understand that you're moving at your own pace. Enjoy, take it easy. Oh yeah, before you go, like and subscribe. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm.